So welcome back everybody. My name is Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Live. So today we're going to do a little build in the shop then we're going to head out to the pole barn house to test out what I'm building today. I've had a common issue on the channel that a lot of y'all have noticed while I'm out there running pneumatic tools and air guns. So the problem is I'm running my 220 volt air compressor in the shop. I'm running about 150 foot of cord out to the house or air hose I should say and I'm having issues with the air condensing, building up condensation because of that long stretch across the yard and I'm getting tremendous amounts of water in my pneumatic tools and my air guns. This is gonna reduce the life of them, this is gonna damage them, this is not good for seals, internals, all that stuff. The other issue I'm having up there is because it's such a long run of air hose, I'm getting a significant pressure drop. So typically I run these air nailers around 90 to 100 PSI. I'm having to bump the pressure all the way up to 120 inside the shop because of the loss of pressure going out there, the restrictions in the hose, the flow, lots of different variables there. Other issues I'm having is as I change nail sizes out there, I'm overdriving some nails, literally driving them all the way through my OSB sheathing, for example, and I'm underdriving some framing nails. I have no pressure control out there. So I have a lot of issues going on. Now you may ask, why don't I just run a pancake compressor out there? Two reasons. One, I've already got my extension cords just about overloaded to run all the way out there. And two, I record YouTube. A pancake compressor running in the background would be horrible for trying to talk, for trying to make uh, good footage. Nobody wants to hear a loud little pancake compressor there. Plus I have a very nice commercial 220 compressor in here. Might as well get the use out of that, paid good money for it, right? So today I'm gonna build what's called an air receiving tank, an air buffer tank, uh, an air surge tank. It has lots of different names. And I'll tell you how I come about this idea. So this is a portable air tank. I was going to use it the other day. Normally they'll have little hoses hooked up and a little valve right here. So you can go out and air up, say, trailer tires that's on the back side of the property under the building. It's just portable air is all it is. Well, that valve failed on me. So I decided to take apart. It was something I could not repair. So instead of trashing the unit, it's a relatively new air tank here. Nothing wrong with it at all. I decided maybe I can build an air receiving or buffer tank with a twist, I'm gonna build it in a way that I personally haven't seen, although I seriously doubt I'm the first person to think of this. So I've ordered a few items. This is a good point in the video for me to say, this is for entertainment only. I do not recommend modifying any pressure tank whatsoever. That's dangerous, it could get you hurt, could get you killed. Don't do this at home. So what is the purpose of an air receiving or surge tank? Uh, at my last job, we used to call them air receiving tanks. Literally our compressor station would be quarter mile to a half a mile away across a meal um, before it would reach a certain department. Well, air does not travel due to restriction down small lines, hoses, very well over a long length of time. These hoses expand, they contract, again, it's not much flow. And when you're doing back-to-back -back nailing, you need a surge of air, a volume right there to fill that air gun very quickly. So this tank, will serve a couple purposes. It allow a large volume of air to build up and be stored for back-to-back -back nailing instead of waiting on a hose to expand, contract the compressor to shove down 150 foot of hose. So you get inconsistencies in my air pressure whenever I do that. The other thing about this tank, it'll help with that condensation. As the air enters in here, it will be allowed to expand. Condensation should settle out. Now, sadly, this tank does not have the little drain on the bottom, but we're gonna take care of that with some parts that I bought. I wish I could find one with a drain on the bottom. I've seen them before, I know they make them, but I'm trying to use something that went bad on me in the shop and the tank is perfectly good. So it'll help with that surge, it'll help with the inconsistencies and due to some of the other parts that I bought, we're gonna be able to regulate pressure, we're gonna be able to dry our air. So I'm gonna kind of make a do-all tank here and I think I bought enough parts to also put it back to its original purpose. All right, so here's the part that failed on this tank, this little air cutoff valve. Cannot get it to seal, cannot see how to get it apart and fix a potential O-ring failure in there. Plus, it doesn't allow very high airflow anyways with that tiny little hole in the bottom. So we're gonna trash this part. I have bought a whole bunch of parts from the hardware store here that we're gonna try to figure out how to put this together and valve it in such a way that it can have multiple uses. As well as I bought an additional air dryer that you fill up with silica beads that'll trap moisture. I have one in the shop, but again, it's helping dry the air come out of my big compressor. It is not helping dry the air that's out there baking in the sun or on high humidity and rainy days, condensing and cooling down very quickly. 
Uh, so it does not help with all the fluctuations in temperature that's in 150 foot of airline. We need something closer to the tool. That's where this is gonna be a key. I'm also going to install a regulator and pressure gauge at the tank as well so I can dial in and control my pressure because this is gonna be getting used all the way from driving big three plus inch framing nails down to two and a half inch sheathing nails all the way down to use my little brad nailer inside once I get down to trim molding. I still have thousands upon thousands of nails to drive in this house while I continue to build it. All right, so that's the silica beads that will trap the moisture. They do need to be changed periodically. I've actually bought a whole jug of them. All right, so here it is. I can hook up the hose that is run all the way out to the house, pressurizing the tank. All I have to do is loosen the regulator all the way and I can see what the incoming air pressure is. And I do want to mention, this tank is rated for 150 PSI working pressure. That won't be any issue because I never run my tank in here that high, but something to watch. That's why I want to keep the regulator all the way open so I can watch the pressure gauge. Then once I get to doing my work, I can kind of dial in to the pressure that I want. So the hose that come with this, I just put a fitting on the end. I could still use this to go out and air up lawnmower tires, trailer tires, whatever I need. And I put a cutoff valve in here so I can keep the air in the tank to use it that way. Also, like I said, now I can just hook up a 25 or 50 foot air hose inside the house on this side, dial in my pressure and go work anywhere that I need to while I'll have the incoming air over here and allowing this tank to be a surge and a buffer. Now earlier I mentioned, I wish this tank had a little drain valve because you build up moisture in air tanks and they need to be drained constantly. That won't be a problem here. All I have to do is tilt the tank open, open this valve and I can pour the water right out of here. It would be nicer to have it on the bottom, but not necessary at all with this. I also want to mention on the valves, I've got full port valves. That is critical for something like this. Full flow all the way through, no major restrictions. And I tried to make sure I got all air fittings too that had very large openings. Okay, well, let's hook this up, see if it'll take pressure, check for any leaks, and uh, go test it out. This lawnmower tire is always going flat. I have got to figure out what's going on with it or put some of that slime in it.
works perfect for its original intended use. Now let's go run a nail gun off of it and see if we can control our pressure. Alright, for those of you that are new to the channel, this may be your first video that you've seen. This is a pole barn house that we're building on the channel. I'm building all by myself currently uh, down in Florida. So if you're interested in a build like this, tools like that, and want to see me use this throughout this build to see if it makes a difference on moisture in the gun, be sure to click the little thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. As you can see, I have many, many more months to go and there's already almost 400 videos on the channel right now of DIY projects and stuff building this house. But enough talking about that, let's try this out. So as you can see, some of the nailing I'm doing right now is nailing down my attic subfloor. And as you can tell, I am overdriving nails because it is a constant struggle to have to run back and forth and adjust air pressure at the shop, switching from a uh, decking nailer or from a framing nailer. I'm constantly jumping back and forth up here. So it's just so aggravating to climb down, run back and forth. Now I can adjust all that from there and hopefully get the majority of the moisture out of the air as well, extending my tool life. So let's pop a few nails in and see if it's set up correctly or run right over there and adjust it and try to get the nails just where we need them. Better, but driving a little too deep. I'm gonna go adjust it down just a little more. Okay, this is more like what I'm looking for. The nails are barely pulled in. Not we're gonna catch them with your feet but they're not like in this instance. This was uh, where I nailed a few days ago. I blew all the way through this stuff. These nails are just sunk in perfectly. I'm down around 90 PSI, which I was able to easily dial in. And it's perfect. Night and day difference from overdriven nails to perfectly sunk nails. All right, so I like it. I really love the ability to dial my air in. That's gonna be the favorite part of it. Now I can still see some moisture coming out of the gun. I have, I'm running two air dryers, one at the tank, one here. Now these are budget air dryers, I understand that. I don't know that it's gonna be possible to completely get the moisture out of this long of a run of a hose. The other issue is I just thought about, I've hooked up 150 foot of hose that's set out here overnight. I may have to run all the moisture out of this hose first, so this will get better. No doubt having an air dryer up there, air dryer here, is going to increase the life of my guns. It just may be impossible in hot, humid Florida to get all the moisture out of an airline period. But I love the portability of the tank. I can still use it as it's originally in, intended design. I love, like I said, that I can dial in my air pressure out here. That is going to be critical with all the nail guns that I switch from, from Brad nailers all the way up to full-size frame and nailers. Come right here, dial it in. I was running about 105 to 106 PSI out here. I've had to dial it all the way down to 90 for these two and a half inch sheathing nails. Awesome that I did not have to climb down and walk all the way back to the shop to do that. And as soon as I pick up the frame and nailer, start putting some more walls together, I can dial my pressure right back up to 100 plus and drive those big three and a quarter, three and a half inch frame and nails. Sorry for the poor lighting. That's just the way it goes up here in the attic until we get the house finished and actually install some lights. Like I said, there's a ton of videos on the channel of DIY projects, the pole barn house. If you're interested, please uh, subscribe, drop a comment if you have any other suggestions on how to improve this uh, air receiver right here. I didn't research it at all. 
probably should have. When I get things in my mind and the way I want to build something, I just go for it. Went and bought a bunch of parts, figured out how to put this together. I like it. It looks clean. It looks professional, almost like it was made that way. But most importantly, it's going to work. It's absolutely going to give me that buffer I need, the adjustability that I need, while also at the same time removing a little bit of moisture out of the air as well. It's a win-win-win type situation. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.